Good afternoon, everybody. <clears throat> My name is Corey Olson, the Tolkien Professor, and this is Mythgard in Middle-Earth. And welcome! I am joined, as always, by my friend Grifflet, who is uh, apparently taking a bit of a nap, resting himself up for his next efforts in uh, rescue and delivery quests, which are always his favorite. He is the stalwart protector of anything as long as it isn't a tree. So, <clears throat> anyway, Grifflet, poor Grifflet, will never live that one down. Anyway, so um, we're gonna run through and uh, and we're gonna we're gonna achieve some rescuing of some more Dunlending, and we're gonna do some fun things here in uh, uh, not just in the mines, uh, but uh, in central Dunland. And in the meanwhile, I'm gonna see if we can do some since we have some relatively. Uh, mindless quests to undertake here. I'm accessing my backlog of uh, of lore questions and taking a look at things here. There was somebody... Which one did I want to talk about? Let's see. I thought there was one that I was uh, saving for the beginning of this time. I had kind of had one in mind, but I can't remember what it was. Um... Okay. We talked, I think, a little bit about, Tony, about your question about why did the Valar wait for the War of Wrath. We talked about that a little bit in Silm film right beforehand, so that was cool. Um, uh, Pontine Finberry, I think yours was the next one, about how do the dwarves know to name one Durin to be king and that he's uh, and that he's much like the first Durin. How could they tell or do they just know? That's a really good question. I don't know uh, the answer to that exactly. We're told that he res that the Durins resemble him really closely. I assume that that means they re he resembles them. Uh, that is, he, the new Durin, resembles the other Durin. Oh, hey, look, here's somebody else who's liberating uh, uh, Dunlandings here, too. That's nice. Um, anyway, uh, I assume so uh, that he he would resemble the other uh, uh, the other Durins. They would certainly have likenesses of the other Durins around, you know, sort of available to them. Uh, s you know, I mean, certainly there must be you know many likenesses of of all of the Durins, um, you know, carved in stone in various places around Khazad Doom. So uh, the you know, the, the, the sort of... Hey, look at this! I found somebody. Alright, let's, uh, let's do this. Alright, we'll score you. Uh, anyway, so... Oh, we're gonna turn down my volume. Okay. Um, so... So yeah, as far as establishing his like his likeness, now I don't really know much. I mean, we we're just there's so much about dwarf culture that, of course, we really just have so little definite information about. You know, um, I mean, I so I think, for instance, it's kind of a dwarvish idea that you know these other guys are in some sense you know that that the spirit of durin is kind of like reborn in them in some sense i mean that that, that is that there's a real and not merely a superficial or perceived connection uh between you know the later durins and the earlier durin but whether that's really true you know whether the original durin is actually reincarnated um you know within um the you know the spirits of of you know his descendants like that or not you know we don't really have enough uh uh information to be able to to say for sure again it's just one of those things as are so many things right uh that we learn about in the lord of the rings that we're just told that they they believe this you know um and sort of no no definite judgment is passed on whether or not that belief is accurate, right? Uh, I mean, this is, uh, it reminds me of, you know, conversations we were just recently having in exploring the Lord of the Rings about Bree, uh, as we've finally, after 13 months, gotten all the way to Bree uh, in exploring the Lord of the Rings. And uh, we, come on, keep going. Don't draw those other guys. Good job. Can you make it past those guys without drawing them? Huh? 
Look at that. Look at you running right past them without running over to accost them. That's so intrepid of you. So prudent. Um, anyway, so yeah, we've, we've just gotten to Brie. And there's that line in Brie about right how the people in Brie believe themselves to be the original inhabitants and that they've been there, you know, forever and ever. But we don't really... It's you know it doesn't say that that's true. It just says that that's what they believe, right? And it's likely, you know. I mean, I I personally kind of believe it. You know, I think that it's uh, um, it seems like just the kind of thing that uh, I mean, it seems to fit everything, all the circumstantial evidence, right? Um, but we don't know. I mean, you know, the town of Bree might have stood in the way that it has stood for only you know two hundred years, and it would still be way past the memory of any of the inhabitants, and they might be operating under the belief that they'd been there for you know seven thousand years. Um, <clears throat> so again, it's one of the really neat elements of Tolkien's world building. I think actually that he doesn't tell us things like that, and I don't just mean like the sort of general preservation of mystery but the fact that that's you know it's like that's not the business of his narrator his narrator isn't in that sense an omniscient narrator right um uh, you know of course that word we have to be uh you know can't be too over literal in the application of the word omniscient to a narrator when you're talking about a when you're talking about a story like that but um uh but but nevertheless like the the narrator doesn't have to know absolutely everything uh, in order to, to be in an omniscient position. But Tolkien's narrator is sort of especially not omniscient, right? It, he's reporting to us things that people say and things that people believe from within a relatively limited scope of knowledge. Um, and he doesn't, the narrator generally doesn't try to transgress that. You know, he doesn't, doesn't claim any other kind of, you know, any other sort of level of, of, of information. Um, anyway, so... So we can't know we can't know for sure if it's legitimate, you know, about the the whole Durin thing, for instance. You know, is there some kind of other secret dwarvish test? Of course, that's the other thing about dwarves, right? Is that you never really can tell. Uh, you know, there's so much that we don't know and can't be certain about uh, because, um, um, you know, because we just like they don't tell folks, right? So, you know, maybe there's some kind of test that they have, you know, that they, uh, um, that they institute to, you know, like maybe there's some secret dwarvish, you know, Durin litmus test. I have no idea. Um, but, uh, you know, some way by which, you know, by which the rightful king shall be known, right? You know, they do it one way in Gondor. Maybe they do it another way, you know, in Casa Doom. Who knows? Um, do I think it's po possible or plausible? You know, do I think it fits within the general um, sort of shape of, uh, you know, the, the kind of theology of Middle-earth for, you know, the original fathers of the dwarves to be reincarnated in their descendants oh dear poor Iago um, do I think it's possible or plausible sure sure I think it's plausible um, remember the fates of the dwarves are kind of uncertain right um, I mean you know we know the fates of the elves and we know the fates of men sort of like that is we know that they leave the circles of the world we don't know exactly where they go after that but that's of course the point because so much of the war is written from an elvish point of view and they don't know but uh, but anyway uh, we 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 know even less about dwarves um, we know that they were you know accepted by oops I was spotted um uh, we know that they were accepted by Iluvatar. You know, we don't exactly know what fate they were given. You know, we're t the only thing, the only definitive thing that we're told in the Silmarillion is that they're, 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 they go to Mandos and halls apart, or at least, again, that's, that's a thing believed by them. Um, and, okay, but does that mean they stay there permanently? You know, that that's it? Um... Do their souls remain in Arda for the length of Arda? You know, are their souls in the... Man, boy, Grifflet, you are not... You gotta do some stealth practice here. You're striking out right and left. Um, anyway, uh, 
So, you know, are, are, are their souls, you know, coterminous with Arda like elves' souls, or are they mortal like humans? We don't even know that much, really. Um, what's to stop them being reincarnated? You know, if, like, for some reason, you know, presumably, I guess, I, I would be guessing anyway, presumably at the uh, uh, insistence or suggestion of Aule, the fathers of the dwarves are, you know, are in fact maintained, you know, in, uh, or, you know, and, and, and reincarnated, brought back to, uh, to operate within, um, uh, you know, within mortal bodies again, occasionally, you know, uh, 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 and for particular times and particular reasons unknown to the rest of people. Do I think that that's possible? Sure. I think that's possible. Um, the, the, the two, re I don't think there's any, I don't see any, I don't see much barrier against it. Um, mostly because, uh, reincarnation is a thing vaguely within Tolkien's world. I say vaguely because, uh, he, it, he decides against it. The original conception of the elves had involved reincarnation. Um, you know, that they were, uh, the, the elves originally were reincarnated within their offspring or within their descendants so that there was like this law of the conservation of elvish souls, right? So that there were like a, a discrete number of elvish souls. So if an elf was, um, if an elf was killed, you know, if their bodies were slain uh, in Middle Earth, they could, their spirits would go to Mandos, and then they would eventually <clears throat> be reborn in the bodies of one of their descendants. So, like their, you know, their grandchildren have a child, and the child has the soul of, you know, the older uh, elf who had died before uh, within it. Um, Tolkien decided against this, uh, and so you know, he he just had them them be able to sort of create bodies for themselves again um, which means there's not a law of the conservation of elvish souls and so therefore um, you know there can't be uh, this would be one reason why elves don't have really big families because uh, it would get uh, the, the world would get overrun with elves pretty quickly if every elf birth is essentially a net gain of one elf on earth you know um, but um, anyway so uh, it's, it's, uh, he, he, he ditched the old idea, however, but again, like it was still around, you know, I mean, the concept of reincarnation, um, is one of the concepts that was kind of in play from the beginning of Middle Earth. And, you know, as those of you know, who have been studying the history of Middle Earth with me, uh, he does sometimes totally move against, you know, move away from particular ideas due to, um, uh, uh, uh due to, philosophical shifts or something like that where he decides it just won't work philosophically um, but at the same time he is very conservative that is to say he very rarely just chucks stuff out so um, it would not surprise me in the least to see him apply a concept like reincarnation which he's rejected in the case of the elves to the dwarves especially since he's applying it very selectively right it's not like all the dwarves are reincarnated all the time um but that selective reincarnation of the um of the the the, the chieftains of the houses like i could see him i could totally see that i mean that that seems to me totally plausible actually um especially since it has that pretty cool um that pretty cool mythic effect right um mythic uh in the, i mean that idea of, you know, that there will be seven Durins and that the final Durin will be the last, you know, the seventh Durin will be the last Durin, uh, uh, really led, lends this, uh, this really neat mythic resonance to the, to the reincarnation and the pattern of reincarnation, right? It's really interesting and meaningful. Uh, so yeah, I could totally see it worked. Okay. Yeah. No, Hey man, I killed so many more than 12 of those things. Woohoo. And there goes Griffith. As you can see, I disabled his, uh, uh, his level stopper because we got yellow again so he, I'm going to let him level up a few here okay and no I still don't I go to get very treasure there he is the long suppressed level 71 that he has uh, so richly deserved and uh, oh hang on a second I'm supposed to aren't I supposed to reforge things yeah those tools I'm supposed to fix the tools 
Griffin, you are so helpful. What a good helper you are. All right. That's it. You just had to reforge one of them. You are welcome here, as long as you do not trouble us. Hey, yeah, no worries. Glad to be able to get you some tools and fix them. That's great. Now I think Kata, you get all the quests, don't you? Oh yeah. Oh look at this. I found all these all these guys, and I get individual things. Hmm. All right. I gotta scope these things out here. What do you got for me? Oh, that's a pretty heavy morale boost for that bracelet there. I like that. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Boy, okay. You know, at least they're making it worth my while. Coin pouch, huh? Nah. Well, nah. Some funny looking leggings, nah. And nah, we're good. Okay, and let's see. Ooh, some rune stitched dumb lending boots. Wonder if those are attractive. Oh, helm? Potential upgrade, but no. Hard to give up the one I got from Halberd. Cloak of the Boar Clan Warrior. I'll take this in case this is a cosmetic upgrade. Yeah, let's see. Okay, I think I did them all. What should I do now? I did a great service. Great! Uh, well, I go to the families of the miners and relate to them the news of their husbands and fathers' fates. Oh, dear. Okay. Um, is there going to be some happy and some sad conversations? Okay. Uh, right. I think... Oh, wait. Hey, Melvin, what do you have to say here? I have not seen your kind before. Uh... Wait, what? I've completed many tasks. Yes. There are not many of us alive today, but those who are continue to grow and thrive. I fear the, uh, that the iron we mine will continue to be made into weapons of war for Saruman, and that is true, but Gwilym has friends among us who will see that such weapons do not prove their worth. Oh, you're going to sabotage the weapons? Sweet! That's real nice. I like that. Ooh, a delicate iron Dunlending earring. That sounds attractive. Let's see. Mm. Nah. Okay. Where are we going next? Go back to Gwilym, huh? Alright, no problem. Uh, but first, let's uh, let's see here. Let's see here. Let's look at this um, cloak. Uh, I don't know. I kind of like the one that I have with the, like, the abominations on it and stuff. A little more pictorial. You know, it's kind of nice. Um, which is the one I'm wearing? Yeah. Let's look at that one there. Okay. Let's see. How about this uh, ornate surcoat of the Dunlin Swordsman? Right? What does that look like? Ooh. That's kind of nice, actually. Wait, hang on. Back up here. No. Yeah, come up here. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, that's better than the one I've got. Let's upgrade. Can I can I do this cosmetically? Do I have to since I can't wear it and I can't wear it, I have to do it in the I have to do it in the dressing room, right? Or whatever it's called, the wardrobe. Okay, fine. Oh wait, I wanted to oops, I wanted to equip that one. Yeah, let's see. Go there. Oh, we'll get that. Two plus two hundred morale. That's that is sweet. Okay. 
Good job, Griffith. Back to town with you. <laughs> yes, Madman Modeler, you totally have corrupted me with the Dunlending uh, 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 cosmetics. <laughs> I like that surcoat of the of the swordsman, though. That's really nice. Okay. All right. Yeah, JJ, I know I can check cosmetics before I choose them. Uh, I just, I was going to choose that one anyway, but then I figured I'd check it out cosmetically, that's all. Oh, hey, look, the mobs are now white. That we're already making progress. Okay, so... Don't I have, let's see, did I get a bunch of other quests? Where are we? We are in Dunland. There we are. No, I don't. I've got the patrol points and the ox meat quests. Okay. Maybe I'll do the patrol point one next. And I'll kill any cows I happen to find. Okay. Sounds like a plan. So where are we going? Where's the... Uh, mm, oh, wait. I don't, I don't have it. Hang on a second. Let's, uh, let's actually activate this so that I can figure out where on earth I'm supposed to be. Uh, which one is that? I forgot already. <laughs> a world of trouble. That's it. Okay. So it's the green one. Where is it? Oh, way down there. Okay, no problem. Down we go. All right. Um, let's, uh, let's do some more lore here. So Jesse D. was asking, Do we know what inspired Tolkien to make the Barrow Whites? My brother and I were thinking the Norse mythology is Draugr, but they don't quite fit. And zombies don't either, to be honest. They're definitely not zombies. Um, the main thing... Yeah, I mean, I, probably, I guess if you want to... Well, okay. Let me answer the question first, and then I'll complain about the question second. So my answer to the question uh, is, uh, is yeah, the, um, they're... Um, the, the Norse Draugr are probably closer, uh, certainly, than kind of normal, kind of mainstream zombies, um, I would say. Um, so if there's an influence there... By the way, the place to look as far as um, where... Uh, where, to, where, to, where to go, where to find uh, the... Barrowites, like where the Barrowites come from, because of course the Fellowship of the Ring is not the first place we meet uh, Barrowites. The Barrowites and the Fellowship of the Ring are based on um, the Barrowites as they're depicted in the Adventures of Tom Bombadil. Tom Bombadil is 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 the first of the the Barrowites guys. Oh, hang on, I got a bunch of cows. Might as well. Hi there, Mr. Cow. Sorry, I know I'm picking on cows, but it's for the greater good of the ox, of not the ox clan. Because, see, and actually, so there's a kind of poetic justice, which I don't even think they really emphasized that I'm killing oxen uh, in order to sort of avenge the boar clan uh, on behalf of the, you know, for being like, who are being oppressed by the ox clan, so. There's a certain amount of, like, turnabout here from a symbolic standpoint, but whatever. Anyway, um, I was talking about Tom Bombadil and Barrow Whites. So, yes, the Barrow Whites first appear, uh, and are called that, um, in the Adventures of Tom Bombadil poem. Um, uh, okay, I think this is where we're supposed to go. Yes, no evidence regarding the warg riders, but there's a strange chain trailing into the water. If you see a strange chain trailing into the water, you should... What? Yank it? Use it somehow? What am I using it for? I tug it. Okay, yeah. What's the worst thing that could happen? <laughs> oh, wow. That guy's huge. <laughs> I've been ambushed by the Great Avog. Oh, dear. Okay. <laughs> you got this, Griffin. There, have you defeated him? Now crawl from out of his corpse. There you go. Okay. Excellent. It's Hloon Avang. 
uh, what is this? The Lake of the Alligator? Um, anyway, okay, so, um, what was I talking about? I was talking about something. I can't remember what. To oh, Barrow Whites. Right, okay. So the Barrow Whites first originated in the adventures of Tom Bombadil. And what we see there, first of all, is he's not a zombie. If anything, he's an animated skeleton. Uh, he's talking, uh, uh, clanking bones and things, rattling your bone rings. You know, that's one of the, um, uh, um, one of the kinds of things that is that is said about the Barrowites uh, in uh, in in the poem, and there's no reason to think that they're not similarly uh, sort of skeletal, uh, most likely, uh, even in the Fellowship of the Ring. Um, so anyway, so as far as you know, what the influences are, I definitely would think, you know in general. Uh, you know, when you when you find something sort of similar in Norse mythology, that's a pretty good um, that's a pretty good indicator. You know, I mean, it's it's you know he is very frequently um, influenced by Norse stuff. So uh, uh, so you know you, you can rarely go too far wrong in uh, in looking at the Norse analogs. However, now I'm so so Jesse, having answered the question, now I'm going to complain about it a little bit um, <clears throat> because. Uh, well, okay, not complain about it exactly, but just kind of a general caution. This is one of my uh, kind of general, I don't know, one of my general doctrines about Tolkien uh, and Tolkien stuff is that I find that people often are too quick to look for sources. Tolkien, of course, has rich relationships with a wide array of sources. And of course, it's really fun uh, to, you know, look and see the, the, the different stories and read some of the original stories that, you know, Tolkien's uh, uh, stuff is, is based on. Like, that's great fun, and I don't want to take anything away from that. But uh, there are two problems with this. One problem is that it seems to me that a lot of people just get into the habit of asking that question first. That is, saying, where did he get those? Or where do they come from? As if, A, there is always a definite answer to that question. Like, as if Tolkien, everything in Tolkien is simply recycled from somewhere else, because that's just not true, right? Um, and if you think of it, if you think of things that way, you're going to swiftly get into the habit of not really paying super close attention to Tolkien and his own story and what he's doing. Because even when he is using a source, he is very often... Um, did I miss the checkpoint? Even when he is uh, using a source, he is very often doing something quite different with it, and uh, you know, and and changing things very significantly, so that it's you know, it still interacts with the source in some way, but it's hardly a, a sort of a straightforward one-to-one. -one, uh, yeah, okay, I've already done the miners. Thank you. Oh, I'm supposed to go up the hill now. All right. Um, so, uh, so anyway, it, it's it's it, it's kind of an invitation to oversimplification in some ways, you know. So, like, because what do you do then when you find a source? Are you, are we done? Right? Do we just say okay, Tolkien took this from there, and the, and then that's it? What does that really tell us about you know the Barrowites in Tolkien's work? Um, yeah, signs of done lending activity, huh? Hey, mysterious crates. Um, yeah, so, hi guys, what are you guys doing? Oh, look, that's a Gondorian ruin, isn't that? Look at those trees, huh? Clear as you please. Okay, hang on, I'm, uh, so I will carry on killing you, but, you know what is really interesting about the Gondorian trees? Look how bushy they are, right? Um, I find that really interesting, like, I don't, I, you know, it's kind of... Don't take that for granted, right? I mean, often the leaves, like, you, you think about how the tree is normally depicted, like, on Gondorian livery and stuff. You know, it, um, it's, you know, the, the, the branches are represented, but not, like, not being sort of bushy with leaves. Whereas these, they almost look like they have lion faces on the side. That's probably just me seeing a shape in the leaves like you might see a shape in the clouds, but still, um... 
the bushiness of the trees is kind of interesting to me. Um, and yes, Madman, they're li- so they're, they're 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 live trees, not dead trees, and they're golden, right? Why are they golden instead of silver? Why? I, I mean, it's not that there isn't a precedent for golden trees, right? But it's um. Uh, but it's interesting. It's not the white tree of Gondor, exactly. Or if it is, I mean, I guess it could be the white tree of Gondor in gold, right? Um, I see Findalar continually trying to bait me there about Balrog wings. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, so it's, it could just be like the actually represented in gold to, I don't know what, like the preciousness and richness of Gondorian stuff, but um, but you would expect it to be in silver, even if just for the sake of being closer to the, um, being closer to the to the white tree. All right, we're gonna we're gonna search crates. What are we looking for? We're uh, I don't know what we're looking for. Wait, what? What does it bear? It they, it bears marks. I've got weapons in them, huh? Yeah, I'm going to collect these weapons. I'm going to steal from the weapon rich and give to the weapon poor. That's what I'm going to do. Alright. Okay. So... Oh, I have to go back and defeat the sentries again? Okay. Hi again, guys! What are your thoughts about this? these trees, right? Do you think those are really lions? Or do you not think those are lions? They kind of look like lions. I mean, I'm not going to lie. That Those look like lion faces in profile. Now, iconographically, I can't make any sense of that, as I don't know of any association between lions. In fact, really, if you think about it, the lion is a really... Um, infrequently utilized symbol in Tolkien's world. Does anybody use the lion? Are there any lions anywhere? Oh, I'm collecting bribing gold? I didn't even catch that. I'm bringing weapons. I'm bribing gold, huh? Okay. Um, yeah, no lions. Maybe lions are too, you know, too Greek. I don't even know. Um, <laughs> maybe Lewis called dibs. <laughs> I don't think so. At least I certainly don't think that would stop Tolkien if he wanted lions. Uh, yeah. Okay, here, let's see. Let's mount up again here. Nope, not. Don't. Don't goat up. Why am I on with the goat? I'm going to ditch the goat. Forget the goat. There is no goat. Um. Yeah. I mean, you can say that it would be just, you know, for, like, climate-related reasons, right? That lions are more southern, southerly, and there, um, there aren't lions, you know, in the north of the world where the stories take place. Yeah, but there aren't that many lions in Greece either, and yet Greek mythology is chock-full of lions. Um, I don't know. But, anyway... Uh, Where am I going next? I'm supposed to get bribing money. I'm supposed to. I'm still supposed to get more beef. Let's do that. But let's see. Okay, so did I finish what I was saying? I think I kind of more or less finished what I was saying. Anyway, you see the point that I'm making about sources, though. I guess the the main thing that I would say is like to be. Careful. Like, it's not like there's any reason not to be interested in it. I mean, it's a perfectly interesting kind of thing to talk about. But, um, 
Hey, I'm looking for evidence of uh, warg riders. Here's one. Hi, can I take you home for evidence? Would you just stay here and let me pound on you? Can we agree to that, please? Um, yeah, so anyhow, I, I, I think that... Um, like I said, I totally understand, and, and I get why people do it, and it is super fun. But, um, honestly, I mean, to be as blunt as I can about it, sometimes when I'm listening to people, and I don't, I don't mean fans, I mean scholars. Sometimes when I'm listening to other scholars talk, the question I keep finding myself wanting to ask is, like, do you give Tolkien credit for inventing anything? Like... Don't you think that Tolkien can just make stuff up? Like, some scholars seem to approach the whole, like, to approach all of Tolkien's works as if the only question to be asked is, where did he get this from? And it's like, yeah, I mean, sometimes it's an interesting question, where did he get this? But, you know, sometimes he just makes stuff up. And so, like, you know, approaching his work with the attitude of, like, I must hunt high and low until I find the source, as if, like, it's a given that there must be a source. Like, it's, why should that be? And even when there is, it doesn't answer the question. I, I mean, it, it's 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 a, to me, on its own, a very radically insufficient analysis of what Tolkien is doing. It, you know, sort of, it doesn't. It's not enough for understanding. It's not enough to really um, make everything clear. Just to say, oh, he got it from there. That's the beginning of a conversation, not the end of a conversation. Um. Anyhow, did I get more bribing gold? I think I did. That's good. Um, so, uh, anyhow, so that's my, that's my, uh, um, my little kind of mini rant on that one. Uh, and I've been, I've been on that subject for a long time. And I mean, I, rem I remember talking about this way back in my very first podcast episode ever that I recorded more than 10 years ago now in my How to Read Tolkien and Why podcast session. So, it's an old topic, but it always comes up again. Um, yeah. And I agree, JJ. It, it, that's the thing. Again, it's not... I'm not like, I'm not anti-source stuff, and I, I'm certainly not trying to claim like Tolkien didn't take it from sources. He made stuff up because that's better. Like it's not better. I mean, the way that he reworks stuff is is really cool and really interesting. And whether whether he made it up out of whole cloth or whether he, uh, um, you know, whether he adapted it from other source, um, still what he's doing with it is really interesting, right? And that's what matters, right? Let's look at the text. Let's look at his story. Let's look at how it works. Um, let's not just be constantly looking from his story elsewhere to, as if that by itself explains it, right? It doesn't explain it. As I say, it's, it, it's, an, it's, it's a relevant conversation, but it's the, it's the beginning of a conversation, not the, not the last. Melindrin, Melindrin, thank you. I haven't burgled anybody in forever. You're absolutely right, and I should totally do that. And especially, Melindry and I even uh, cleared a little space in my inventory before today, so I should celebrate that by filling it with useless junk that I burgle from folks. But this is a big deal right here. Look at this. We've got a triple totem situation, including a jumbo totem, right? Now, this is an ox shrine, which is interesting. I thought this was a boar place that the ox... This, this was a hostile takeover from the ox people. Ooh, Munfiral's shrine, huh? Is Munfiral an ox spirit? Is she one of those uh, Ukluth? Let's see, there's a placard. It describes the ritual used by the uh, Deruth of Dunlin to call upon the ox spirit Munfiril, which they call the Uchwirad for aid. Right. The troubles in uh, Barnarvan, Barnavan, uh, may cause en may be cause enough to attempt such a feat. Hey, I'd like to talk to the ox spirit Munfiril. Who wouldn't? The placard demands the use of a sigil, which I don't possess. Oh, but I might be able to take it off the corpse of somebody else. Okay. Yeah, let's do that. Let's totally do that. Uh, okay. I wish I could burgle it off somebody. 
Wouldn't that be awesome if you could burgle quest items? I would so love that. All right. Here we go, Melindrian. Let's see. Come on, come on, come on. And boom. Oh. Well, of course he failed. I can't hardly blame Grifflet. He's dead out of practice. Hey, look at that. The first chump I met had it. Okay. Love it when that happens. Okay. Let's see. Okay, there's their little ox banner. Their little raggedy ox banner. Ooh, the shrine is now click onable. The big shrine, not just the placard. Okay. Uh, can I talk to... Oh, whose heads are these? Who thought putting people's heads on spikes around here was a good idea? Seriously, Monfiro, is that how you roll? Or are they not getting you? I think they're probably not getting you, because when I talked to the Uch, the Uch Guirad before, in the in the Morningshaws, right? You know, you guys were awesome. Clearly, you know, Maiar of, uh, of, of Orome... Uh, well, certainly the, you know, the Huntsman was. Um, and, you know, I assume many of you are as well. So, though maybe maybe you're of Yovana, come to think of it. I mean, she would have liked Oxen, right? Okay, I placed a sigil. Now what? Woo! Oh, there she is! Oh, Hi! Hey, well, oh, yeah, you're really tall. I mean, I know I'm a hobbit, but you're kind of tall anyway. And, oh, oh my goodness, you go to the same tailor as Goldberry. That is so exciting. Oh, you must be nice. Look at that. Yeah, clearly, clearly the product of the same tailor shop as Goldberry. That is so exciting. I would have expected your clothing to be a little more oxen-y, oxish, uh, a little more bovine. Uh, I mean, no offense, one viral, don't get me wrong. It's not that I think that you should be more bovine because you're lovely, and so are cows in their own way, but your outfit is, well, rather more botanical than I would have expected. What would I have expected? Well, I wouldn't have expected her to be in the skins of oxen, right? So that it's uh, she wouldn't not to look like an oxen exactly. Well, maybe to look like an oxen, taking the form of an oxen. I mean, I talked with other spirits who were in the form of animals, um, but uh, but uh, but yeah, something maybe just something iconographically recalling the you know like maybe a nice little oxen symbol on your dress or something but I guess cows would like the botanical dress right uh yeah okay never mind I think Griffith's in enough trouble go ahead Monfiro ah you summoned me oh I love it right I think I summoned you but you're like thank you for heeding my summons that's really cool does it surprise me that uh, my coming is of your design? No, no, I'm not surprised. I'm kind of delighted, but not surprised. I care very much for the people of the Ox, but Madden Brennan has fallen to corruption. Oh, no, we need to save the Ox clan, not defeat them. I like it. He and his people oppress the remnant of the Turkluth. I know, that's really the problem, right? It's what I was coming here for. The people of the Boar. And plot war with the horse lords who are in the favor of the Valar. Ooh, really, that's quite a statement right there. They are in the favor of the Valar. Okay, this can't be tolerated. Uh, go to Barnav uh, Barnavan and bring this message to Madin Brennan. If he does not turn from his evil ways, he and his people will feel the wrath of the Uch Gwirad and the Huntsman. I'm sure he will listen to that coming from me. But I should take your sigil. That's that's a, that's a good idea. Uh, and speak when you are ready to depart. Ooh, yeah, nice. We get a we get an instance. That's sweet. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's do this. Go! Marden's grandfather was a good man 
giving succor to the people at the bore when the drive loose nearly destroyed them. Okay. Marden and his son Nevid, however, have fallen to evil ways. And I cannot, as a servant of a huntsman, allow this travesty to continue. Yeah, let's not allow this travesty to continue. Hi, Mr. Ox Clan Garn. So I've just been talking to the Ukwirad and they sent me here, and I'm gonna try to talk some sense into your leaders. Hmm. Oh, I must be uptown. Yeah, I'm uptown, right? This is the uptown part. And the downtown part is down the hill. Right, okay. Um, all right, there's Madden Brennan, and there's Nevid, his son. Oh, dear, his son does not look... I was hoping his son would look a little more, you know, approachable, but not so much... Where's your ox iconography? Surely you should have an ox somewhere on your person. Instead, you just went with the spiky bear pelt, right? Which is a classic look uh, for, you know, a Dunlending chieftain or semi-chieftain. And your dad is going for the same thing. Uh, both of you obviously shop at the same belt store, you know, like the, you know, WWE uh, surplus belt store, clearly, but... Um, neither of you have an ox anywhere about you. You paint your faces a little bit differently, but boy, I can sure see the family resemblance here. How about weaponry? What is that that you have? Is that a, is that a, oh, you both have hammers, right? Okay. All right. Uh, you guys look like a depressingly united front here. Okay. Why are you bothering me? I'm not threatened, dude. I am so not threatening you. I am coming with a word of caution, a gentle word of warning from the Ukiwira. That's all. You have the protection of Sarum and the Wise. Now I present you with the sigil of the Ukiwira and expect you to believe the spirit herself sent me. Yeah, I was kind of afraid you might take it the skeptical line. Um, uh, you're gonna accuse me of stealing from the shrine. Yeah. That's awkward. Adding blasphemy to interference. Okay. Come on. Oh, you're sending your son after me, huh? Okay. Let's see what we can do here. Uh-oh. They're kind of proving a little more competent than I would ideally like. Uh, if I take out your son, are you going to... Uh, probably not going to be good, right? Aha! He's yielding. Oh, but uh, the other dude doesn't yield. Okay. Come on, Griff, what you can do this. Take him out. Whack. Alright. Guards, what am I... Oh, great. You're going to you're gonna have them shoot me? Who's shooting me? Who's shooting me? You! Knock it off. Okay, Griffith, get him. Come on. You can do it, Griffith. Oh, this is going to be close. Boom. Boom. Yes! Boom! Whew! Ha! Ooh! Okay. Alright. Nevit. Oh, wait. Nevit says stop the foolishness from way over here. Okay. I was just trying to get the people that were shooting at me, Nevit. Sorry about killing your dad. I tried to warn him. You heard me. Murderer. Oh, dear. Okay. So that just did not go well all around. So, Monfiro, that didn't go well. He was a fool, and his son no less. Yeah, as I told you, they looked too much alike. I, I was hoping that Nevin would look, you know, different and kind of uh, more promising, but he totally didn't. Uh, yet the true blame for these evils falls to one of my own kindred. Ah, meaning Saruman, right? Okay. Um, thank you for bringing my warning. That's kind of indirect, but I assume it's Saruman she's talking about there. 
for bringing my warning to Barvanan, Barnavan, I keep saying that wrong, and grant you what grace I may. Well, thank you. What grace can you grant me? Clansman's sentry boots? Those might be attractive. Uh, yeah, let's take a look at those. Let's see. Let's see. They're pretty much identical to the boots I'm wearing, to be perfectly honest. That's okay. Wow. All right. Well, I'm sorry we could not, you know, bring about a change there. But, okay, I still need more oxen meat. Let's finish the oxen meat quest and then I'll go back to the city and take the bad news, well, good news and the bad news, really, uh, about the miners whom I could or could not save. Uh, okay. All right. The, oh, cow on the hill. There we go. Oh, oh dear. Hang on, Mr. Cow. Uh, oh, yeah, you are a Mr. Cow, so you're coming down to me. How convenient. Okay, Mr. Dun... I sh shouldn't I get, like, two steaks out of a Dun Bull? Wouldn't you think so? Doesn't seem like too much to ask, does it? Okay. Um... More lore questions. Actually, let me, uh... Let me do some announcing first. So first, just to remind folks of things... Uh, I'm going to uh, remind people of things in, uh, okay, now I'm going to announce things in increasing, in order of increasing proximity. So, um, oh, hearken, a cow. Uh, so, uh, first, I wanted to talk about, uh, we're doing again this summer, um, something that we did last summer at Signum, which is our summer camps for middle school kids. Uh, I am really pumped about our summer camps this year. So you may remember that I talked last year about our Hobbit camp that we did, our Hobbit immersion camp, um, uh, which we did in partnership with local libraries and or uh, homeschool groups or family groups. The whole idea of these things being that we... Um, uh, we run an online class, so we help to sort of guide kids all the way through the book that we're doing. We, you know, we did The Hobbit last summer. And so we have uh, uh, broadcast sessions that we do live for the kids to attend, either in groups or individually, uh, for you know every day for two weeks as we read our way through the book. But at the same time, we also coordinate uh, with local groups, again, family groups, school groups, or, uh, or libraries, where kids can get together to have additional discussion together, work on projects and and uh, and and games and things like that to just basically help kids to immerse themselves imaginatively into the world of the books that we're doing. Hobbit again last year, and we provide like a, a really cool packet of information with some activity ideas and stuff that you can do with kids if you're if you're facilitating if you're sort of hosting one of these uh, one of these groups, so that you don't have to come up with your own curriculum or anything. We do that in conjunction with the the class that we offer. The whole thing is completely free. It doesn't cost anything to libraries or groups. It doesn't cost anything to individual families who participate. We just want to see lots and lots of people, you know, reading The Hobbit and talking about it, right? So this year, we, uh, uh, we did it again, and, uh, but we're, we're expanding. We're, we're doing four camps this year instead of one. So we're going to redo the Hobbit camp to give more people an opportunity who didn't hear about it last year uh, to do that. But we're also doing... Uh, at uh, Harry Potter camp. We're doing Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. We're doing a Narnia camp. Uh, we're doing The Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe, uh, which is obviously book one of the Chronicles of Narnia, as everybody knows. And then we're, uh, we're doing a Wrinkle in Time camp, which would be a lot of fun, uh, uh, especially in conjunction with the film coming up. So yeah, so, so, so Hobbit camp, Potter camp, Narnia camp, and Time camp uh, uh, this summer. And they're not all at the same time. They're, they're, there's some overlap among them. They're all between, basically, they start after the 4th of July and go through the middle of August, basically. Um, so it is possible to do more than one. Uh, uh, you can do up to, well, you can do all of them if you want to. Um, 
So uh, I recommend I see that uh, Tug McGill posted the uh, the the page there in the uh, in in the chat, which is great. So if you just click on that page, you can see all the information. Scroll down, you can see there's lots of information. Um, uh, send any you know so go to your local library send them to this page you know uh, make sure that they that they see this they can sign up the library right there again it costs nothing to the organization um organizations like a library can participate as much or as little as they like it's just a way to help facilitate summer reading and a really great summer reading program uh for kids it's targeted again at middle school um at middle school camp middle school age kids uh so you know ages 9 to 13 no, it's not just for Americans. It can, uh, uh, it, it, you know, it, anyone around the world can participate with us. So uh, it, it's uh, it's going to be great. So I wanted to make sure to let you guys know about our expanded summer camp program this year because it's going to be really, really exciting. So um, please do spread the word about that. Um, it's a, just a great way for local families, school groups, libraries to help to facilitate some really engaging reading programs uh, with young readers over the summer. So... That is announcement slash reminder number one. And I got a ton of quests to hand into Gwillem here. Let's see. I got some beef. There's some beef. Thank you. That's great. Now I've also got some... Oh yeah, I killed a big alligator. It wasn't an old wives' tale after all. Yes, somebody chained it up, so somebody clearly knew about that. Um... But, uh, yeah, no problem. Uh, here's another cloak. Is that cloak any good? Let's see. What does it look like here? Ooh. That is colorful. Wow. I don't even know. That's a little periwinkle for me, but... I don't know. I don't know doesn't really fit my ensemble right now. I'm going stealth mode. See, I'm like dirt colored right now. I like the base color because I blend into the landscape here in Dunland. If I'm that periwinkle blue, I don't think that would work. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see, what else? Um, oh, Tower on the Hill? Yeah, weapons. I have not seen your kind before. Right, okay. Um going to help disrupt the influence of the white hand, right? That's what we're all about. That's one of the things we're all about. Who was calling for help? Oh, the mine! Yeah! Before. I helped out a lot in the mine. Yeah. Um, as long as the oh, shines, more. You are here. Uh, make sure the mine is being worked and quickly enough that Prudwin Brehur does not notice the disruption. A few of the Boar Clan miners left the village. Uh, Oh, left in the village. So we're supposed to carry on with the mines. Because I've theoretically helped to clear it of bugging. Is that the, is that the idea? Okay. All right. I will... Uh, unaccompanied miners. That's good. I like that. All right. Uh, my patrol was not fruitless. It was a little bit awesome. And you have more. Very good. Um, ooh... Oh, I like this boar tusk. Yeah, that's a pretty serious upgrade right there. A little extra morale with the boar tusk here. Let's let's check this out. Oh my goodness, 400 morale from that boar tusk. 400 net morale. Liking that. Okay. As long as the sun shines, you are welcome. As if try to make me understand, you're a member of that resistance I first came upon in Hlan Ross. Yeah, great. This resistance has taken the guise and mantle of the Boar Clan. Right? Yep, I remember meeting them. Uh, as a symbol of defiance. Okay, because the Turkluth were a clan of the Algraig in the land to the north you call Enidwife. Right. When the Turkluth refused to bow to Sarum, the Dragluth destroyed them almost utterly. Right. I remember hearing about that a long time ago. The people here in the lower village are all that remain of the true Torkluth. Madden Brennan's grandfather gave them refuge out of kindness, but Madden himself placed them all under thraldom. You probably haven't heard the news that I just offed him, but I understand. They are now little more than slaves of the White Hand. Uh, speak with the people of the Boar and learn what I can do to help them. Great. I will happily do that. Um, I got lots of people to talk to in here. Um, okay. So, um, well, I'm going to be talking to people, so hang on a second. 
trust Devodia, but perhaps you may be uh, you're one of the people I'm helping. Okay, good. Uh, you need more food. I just totally brought you 10 cows worth of food, but that's all right. Uh, excess stores throughout Upper uh, Barnavan. Okay, I will go fetch you some food from Uptown. And Nestia, oh, I have, do I have bad news or good news for you, I wonder? Bad news. Oh, dear. Perhaps Gwilm will know what to do. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Sorry. Hate to be the bearer of bad news. Okay. Hey, Lundwin, um, oh, yeah, you're one of the ones I, I need help. Okay. Um, Gwilym is a, is a true child of the ox, one of the good ones. Okay. Prudwin, chief of Madden Brennan's Brehur, okay, is also the overseer of the Barnavan mine. Go to the home of Prudwin Brehur and teach him the meaning of kindness and compassion in a way that only one such as me might accomplish. <laughs> okay. I gotta chastise Prudwin Brehur. All right, okay. I think I'm. I think I'm catching your grift, drift there, Lundwin. You're being very tactful. You're maintaining deniability, and that's fine. You wouldn't work in the mines if Prudwin Brehur himself put a knife to my throat or my children's. Okay, tell me how you really feel about working in the mines. Um, I mean, I understand. This guy sounds like a jerk, and I'm about to go chastise him, if you know what I mean. Hey, Hadun. Oh, you're headed straight off to the mine. But, he says? But what? I don't understand why you're saying but. Uh, okay, oh, and I think I have news for you. I wonder if it's good news or bad news. Good news! Joyous news! Oh, good. That's excellent. And the children are happy and dancing. Okay, who are you? Uh, it's, uh, about the miners. Will you come to the mine? Um, yeah. Oh, Bervan, he's great. Yeah. Um, but you don't know if you want to risk your life in the mine. Well, I understand. Man, that's a lot of quest rings. Still have a lot of conversations to have. Oh, hey, Nona, I, uh, what did I do? Oh, I have bribe money. Yeah, that's what I have. It took so small a sum to buy the loyalty of these men. A, a dozen curses of the wizard for his crimes, but a thousand upon the dun lendings for forgetting their honor. Yeah, I know. Really, your kinspeople are not covering themselves with glory here. Um, ooh, let's see what do we have here. Agility, fate, and vitality, huh? That's looking like a winner. I do not think Peregrine is lost. Right. Help its people as much as you can. I'm in the middle of helping them, like, all, I mean, all up one side and down the other here. Um... They may stand resol stay resolute against the wizard. Well, we can hope. We can hope. But I've gotten lots of stuff. Look at this. Look at me. Almost losing stuff here. Look at all these crafting materials. Oh, of course. Of course. I hate, I hate quest items that appear in my pending loot. So much. So much. How many other quests have I not uh, managed to remember to get here? Cage keys. Okay, I've gotten that. Hmm. 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 Okay. <sighs> Hang on, Nana. Now I've got it. There we go. Bring the spear to Gwilym. Uh, okay. How about the cage keys? Where did I get this? Open the cages and free the captives. 
All right. And what's this thing? Oh, the Nakamu, the Nakmao symbol. Bring it to Gwilym. Okay. Okay. Anyway, Nana, sorry. What were you saying? Um, oh, help them as much as I can. And then go to the Gravewood, Gravenwood, and meet up with the Rangers. Okay. Right. Great. Thank you. Anyway, I'm still talking to dozens of people. Hey, Hronwen. Uh, do I have good news or bad news? Bad news. You're Yago's wife. Oh, dear. How dare I say such things? Uh, I'm sorry. I made your kid cry. Oh, that's terrible. Hey, you want to go help in the mines? You are welcome here. As long as you do not try. Uh, you're coming to the aid of your people. Good lad. Hey, uh, how can I help you? Okay, wait. Many of our folk have been taken by Hruwalan Brehur and held captive. Oh no, your daughter is being held hostage? Oh, yeah, I'll parley, I'll parley with him, all right. No problem, an honorable exchange. Give him an honorable exchange. Okay, no problem. And, okay, I think I'm done with the bad news, so I think I have good news for you. I laboriously freed your husband. That's right. Prepare for his joyous return. You're welcome. All right, Clore. What can I do for you? Much of our oppression comes from the labor we must endure to provision and supply Saruman's war efforts. Burn some of the supplies. Whoa. It may, might hinder the wizard. Okay. All right. More sabotage. That's usually fun. Hey, you want to go to the? Go, do you want to go to the mines? Oh, right. Look at so. I guess we had what, sixty percent mine uh, assistance there, and you must be looking for good news. No problem. Okay. Whew. All right, I think I finished all my interviews. Now let me go and give those other two quests back to Gwilym up there. All right. Oh, hey there, Kiriana. All right, Gwilym. Okay, what do we have? Oh, right, yeah, because I told everybody. Fur-lined mantle, huh? Oh, yeah, no, those, those are no good. I don't like those at all. And no. And no. Yeah, we're good. Okay, unaccompanied miners. Three is better than none. That's good. Unsettling evidence. Okay. Yes, people are allying themselves with war riders and a spear. Goblin spear, huh? Requiring further study. Okay, fine. Whew. All right. Now, what am I doing? I'm collecting food stores. I'm freeing the innocent. I'm punishing the wicked. I'm having a busy afternoon. Okay. Oh, wait, I can get rid of that epic quest and go back to punishing the wicked. Okay. That's good. Okay. Let's see. What time is it? All right, quarter after two. We're still good. So more announcements. So that is, that was that was the summer camps are going to be a lot of fun, but that is merely the least proximate of the announcements. More proximate unto us are oh, are there guards? That was futile. 
I mean, on the guard's part. Um, so the, um, the next one that I wanted to announce, I wanted to remind you about London Moot. London Moot is coming in April, April 28th to be specific. Go to londonmoot.com for registration information and all the uh, and all the details. I cannot wait uh, to get over. To, I haven't been to uh, to the UK in years now. It's been since 2012. It's been over five years since I've last been over there. So uh, I am uh, really excited to get back, and even more excited uh, to get to meet many of you and spend some time. Uh, over there with you guys and and have a really fun conference on the 28th. Uh, so I hope that, uh, I know that several of, uh, of you guys, several of, uh, of uh, uh, you know, Griffith's friends are, are uh, planning to make it over. Um, that's going to be, that's going to be wonderful. So I hope that, uh, you know, some of you who are also over there in Europe might be able to make the trip over to England that weekend. Uh, and join us because uh, it's going to be great fun. So again, LondonMoot.com. Uh, please go and uh, uh, and check that out here. Tug McGill is point. Yes, I have skipped a few less proximate things. Uh, there's a whole list of events that we're building now um, of regional events beyond just um, the London Moot, which is the next one that's scheduled and coming up. Nevid, I thought we I thought we had an understanding. I thought that you you know, were like ready to grant that your dad had been, you know, ill judged. Um, okay, yeah. Get thee gone, Nevid. Honestly. Um, yeah. So anyhow, um, I do, uh, I, so I, I hope to see you guys at London Moot and please do look at that list of other, of other moots that we are organizing. We're organizing a whole bunch of moots. Um, uh, our regional moot program has really been taking off, and that's been really fun. Do I have to kill Nevin again? Has he come back after me with a baseball bat? He has. So he fought me with a hammer the first time. The second time, he came after me with a, a long, a, a, like a two-handed sword, a great sword. And now he's coming at me with a baseball bat. Seriously, some people never learn. Hey, where are you going? Oh, you're fighting Kiriana? Then we can't have that. You get off my stealth healer. Okay. Um, ooh, there's a stolen keepsake over here. Okay. Ooh, yeah, but. Oh. Hi, Mr. Rock's Clan Guard. <laughs> you like my stealth healer too, huh? Okay. Stolen keepsake. What is it? A medallion? Bears the emblem of the Boar Clan. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder who that belongs to. Okay, let's see. We need more food stores. Only two out of ten. Oh, man. I've still got tons of food stores left. All right. Um, okay, anyway. So, yes. Lots and lots of... Um, lots and lots of, of... Whoa. Lots and lots of guards here. Oh, Prudwen, you are the minor dude. What's your name? Oh yeah, bring it, guards. I am not scared of you. Um, so I should probably, maybe, arguably concentrate here for a second. Okay. Um. So yeah, lots of events, but I wanted to, uh, well, I guess I can talk about them a little bit. Um, so I'm going lots of places. We are setting up regional events uh, all over the place. We have th so far three international events that we are hoping to do uh, and a bunch, of, uh, a bunch of domestic ones. We are uh, in the uh, active planning stages, almost ready to announce in some, they're in different stages, but we are actively planning uh, for this year, for 2018, um, get-togethers in L.A., the uh, the San Francisco area, uh, Denver, Kansas City, New England, and Charlotte. Um, in addition, of course, to London Moot and to Tex Moot, which has already happened. Um, we're hoping to add some more in the coming years. I'm hoping to add... Uh, 
Uh, we're hoping to add one in Toronto and one in Seattle and one down under somewhere, either in New Zealand or Australia. Um, if you would like to, uh, and Florida also, I would uh, I would love to add one down in the uh, down in the Orlando, uh, Tampa area. That'd be really cool. So, <clears throat> if uh, I wanted to let you know, just that you know that's kind of in the offing, you know, and that we're planning that. Um, but more, if you wanted to be involved, all of these events happen. These regional events happen because we have local people. <clears throat> who are willing to be sort of our point person uh, to help to make the to make the thing happen? We have a lot. You know, it's we don't leave our volunteers to just kind of figure that out on them on, on their own. Um, we have a, a lot of resources to offer people. We we have uh, the moots pretty well sort of scheduled and planned out. You know the steps that need to happen in order to in order to make it occur, and you know the 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 call for papers and and sort of lists of. Uh, of the you know sort of a simple list of the stuff to do and everything like that it's fairly simple and we can we can help but what we really need are people on the ground especially people who have um you know a connection to all right okay i gotta get that food store but i'll kill nevin one more time with a sword again this time um anyway so um uh, so yeah, uh, if you if you would like to uh, to help to make one of these events happen, if you would like to help to be one of our uh, one of our organizers, that would be especially valuable, uh, and I will be very grateful, um, and uh, uh, will be even more excited to uh, uh, to finally meet you when I come out to the moot. Um, in any case, if you want to if you want to help, just um, let me know. Send an email to info at signumu.org. And we will, uh, we will, we will make it happen. Um, anyway, so those are going to be, those are going to be, those are going to be great. Yeah, Orlando. I'm thinking. I, I, I'm sort of shooting for February 2019 as when I would really like to see an Orlando event happen. Um, you know, we will. Uh, uh, you know, but but again, that's sort of pending, pending. Uh, getting. We have. Uh, we already have a couple volunteers, so we're kind of starting to work on that one um but that one's still in the fairly early stages the ones which by the way are are closest to being definite are san francisco la uh and charlotte those are all almost ready to 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 release definite information and registration information for those um for uh the others we're 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 getting closer um but uh, but there are several for which we we really are still just kind of collecting general interest and in, and in, in hoping for for uh, initial volunteers who can step up and help us to uh, make it a reality. So um, and yes, Druid's Fire, I am totally coming to the PAX East meetup this year. Uh, that is going to happen. Uh, I'm, I've pretty much made up my mind about that. So um, I don't think they can keep me away. Uh, be gone, everybody! Run away! Oh, who are you? Oh, wait, you're... Oh, right, Honorable Exchange. You're the one who's holding people hostage. Release your thralls. So I have an exchange for you. Let's exchange your hostages for your own life. Oh, you will not take this deal. Fine. Then I shall rob Saruman of one of his paltry henchmen. You're kind of buff, actually. It's fine. Anyway, um, so, uh, yeah. Anyway, yeah. Okay, so the other one that I wanted to, uh, the other one that I wanted to, to announce, the other thing, the, the most proximate event of all is happening tomorrow, and that is uh, the chicken run, the long-awaited fried chicken run. I can't wait. So tomorrow, uh, starting at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, I am going to be uh, participating in a chicken run from... 
Mickle Delving to Mordor. We're going to go all the way to Mount Doom. And this is especially exciting for me because I have never seen Mordor before. Uh, poor Wigand is still waiting to go through the Paths of the Dead. I haven't been able to, to touch poor Wigand in forever. I've been super busy lately. And so my Lotro playing time outside of, uh, outside of Grifflet has been practically nil. Um, what am I still missing? Another captive yeah one more cage huh oh there it is okay um yeah so um anyway so chicken run tomorrow it's going to be great so so if you wanted to uh participate in that landreval servo server sanson's farm 11 a.m server time uh and we're going to go to mordor so you know, I can't promise a super efficient chicken run because I don't do efficient. Um, but, um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm going to be going into look at this poor old lady. Come on, you can do it. You got it, Grandma. I'll guard you. Yeah, don't worry. You just keep at it. Look at you. You look like you're rowing a boat. Woohoo! Leading the jailbreak. All right, I'll guard your, I'll, I'll guard your back here, Grandma. So anyway, yeah, so chicken run tomorrow. It's going to be great. So, you know, join, you can join me. Of course, I'll be streaming it on uh, the Signum Twitch stream. So twitch.tv slash Signum you uh, if you uh, uh, if you want to just join us there, um, because, again, remember, my first time ever seeing Mordor. So if you want to join, okay, I'm still catching up with her. You got it. Don't worry, I'll get the guards. OK, that's good. I'm drawing them off from grandma. Uh, yeah, so, uh, so I, if you want to join me, if you want to see my reactions as I, uh, as I see Mordor for the very first time, join me tomorrow. Uh, that's going to be, that's going to be great fun. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, very funny, Fair Venon. Oh my goodness, look at how many people I've got to interview again. Boy, I'm just making the conversational rounds down here. Do we even have time to talk to all these people? Uh, oh, I'm delivering food. That's okay. These are all pleasant things. All right, yeah. Uh, right on the chuck wagon coming around. Can I give you some food? That's right. Oh, good, good, good. This is happy. Oh, you're going to the mines, so your family's not happy. Okay, Mister. I won't go to the mines, but I'll give you some food. Right, and heap burning coals upon your head. So how about that? Um, yeah, so, okay. So definitely uh, chicken run tomorrow. Don't forget about that. 11 a.m. Landreval and Signum, dot, uh, Signum U uh, Twitch channel as well. Okay. Oh, yeah, I burn the supplies like nobody's business. Maybe it'll hinder them. Let's hope. And... Oh, hey, yours is the keepsake, huh? It was taken... It belonged to your wife. Oh, dear. She was sent to the accursed mines. That's terrible. Man. The poor Boar Clan people. I'm glad we're out here Robin Hooding for them. Hey, you want some food? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, I helped some people here. Yeah, I took care of that guy. He refused to release the captives. Alright. Give me the helmet. Alright. And... What else? Oh, food! Also food. Excellent. Great. Okay. Um, cool. You found a way to fall into the crack of doom? Oh, but during an instance. Oh well. Okay. So I can't. So I can't take the chicken there. All right. <laughs> JJ still wants to never forget the walking tree T-shirt. Oh, poor Grifflet. Never gonna live that down. That's right. So. 
I found your husband was dead, but at least I've brought food to your family, so I feel a little bit better about that. Okay, how many more? I said a few more families to deliver food to. Okay. All right, more food. And I think one more family for food. That's right. This looks good. Okay. <sighs> okay. All right. Oh, that's up here. All right. I fed the people. You are welcome here, as long as you do not trouble us. All right. Who else do I need? Oh, punishing the wicked. Yeah. Where's that one? Oh, yeah, you. Oh, that's right. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, old lady here. Right, okay. Um, you confess you knew the Brayher would not heed kindly words. I, I kind of... I And can I confess that I kind of suspected that you knew that he wouldn't heed that? I think we had an understanding there. It's all good. Clansman Sentry's jacket. Huh? Let's see. Let's just see. Oh no. Oh no, that's way more plain. I like the new one that I got but can't finish yet. Ooh wait, a sharpened ox flare? Who doesn't want an ox flare? Oh yeah, I can totally upgrade to an ox flare. Plus 50 vitality? Oh, sign me up for the ox flare. Good grief. Definitely, where are you? Okay. All right. Um, okay, I've got the cage keys, and I helped everybody. Okay. Have we finished Barnavan just in time for the end of the stream? That would be great. All right, Gwillem. I freed the innocent. You should have seen him run. That was so satisfying. The Brennan and his Bray Horse shall incur the wrath of Saruman for their inability to supply iron for the wizard's war, but they may now be too frightened to retaliate against the Torkluth. Well, here's hoping. Okay, what do you what do you got here? Agility, vitality. Okay, I think we can make use of some of that. Who is that it? Yes! And we're done! Okay, so just next time we move on to find Amlon on the western border of Gravenwood. So off to the Gravenwood next time. Very cool. All right. Um, cool. So, all right. Uh, the, so where, are we, where are we heading off to? Up, up there in Gravenwood. Okay. We're making the rounds. We're doing pretty well here. Just Gravenwood and then down to the Gap of Rohan, right? Anyhow, okay. Um, however, it's time to talk about schedules. So next week, actually, I am sorry to say I'll be gone the next two weeks <clears throat> because I'm traveling with my family uh, for the... So our, their, my kids' spring break is the week after next. But we're leaving on Friday, I'm afraid. Uh, so... I will actually miss the next two Fridays, but I will be back on the first Friday of March, which I think is March 6th. Um, so, uh, uh, so no Grifflet for the next two weeks. So we'll have, yes, next time is in three weeks. Yep, yep. Uh, Druid's Fire will be guest hosting for me the next couple weeks, but at least we will have the chicken run tomorrow. So the chicken run tomorrow will try to help co compensate for two weeks of no Grifflet. Uh, so I hope you're able to join me tomorrow, 11 a.m. Uh, on uh, twitch.tv slash signumu, uh, or of course on Landreval server at uh, uh, Sanson's Farm in Mickle Delving at 11 a.m. So thanks everybody, and I will see you guys next week. Bye now. Not next week. Tomorrow or three weeks from today. Okay. Whew. Thanks everybody. Bye now. Thanks for joining in on my rambles around Standing Stone's brilliant digital adaptation of Tolkien's world. 
If you enjoy these adventures, please consider supporting this and other entertaining educational programming by donating at signumuniversity.org fund.